Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today we're going to be doing a new project for um, Artispree Iron-On Ink. And I'm sure that you guys have seen folks make t-shirts and such using vinyl um, decals on the front of them. Well, today what I'm gonna do is a little bit different. We're gonna actually be using Artispree inks, which means we're going to basically bake it or iron it on into the fabric of the t-shirt. So I've got a couple of t-shirts. This is a poly t-shirt, meaning it is polyester. Um, I have another one out that's already out of the packaging and says, just looking on the tag real quick, I believe this is 100% polyester. I don't see it on the tag, but I'm pretty sure that that's what it is. So that's what I'm gonna be working on today. So. First off, I need to get a design, and I've decided on a design from Design Bundles that I already have downloaded onto my computer. It's a cute llama, so I'm gonna put a cute llama face on the front of my shirt. So first step is getting that into my Canvas, uh, my brother Canvas workspace, um, so I can get that sent over to my scanning cut. So I've got my brother Canvas workspace opened up, and I'm gonna select to create a new project. Go ahead and open that up. And then next I'm going to pull in, I'm going to import, I believe it is from this one where it says SVG. It'll let you pull in an SVG file. And usually that's what I download when I take things off of websites like design bundles. And this one's actually from Crea Creative Fabrica. And it was a free download over there. I will leave a link to this um, cute llama down below. So I'm going to choose file and then select the file off of my computer. And it's going to be this cute little llama here. Now I decided I'm going to just go with the black and white version. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have it. Well, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and pick out this version. If I picked out the other, I, it would give me the opportunity to do all the cutting of all the different shapes. You can do this with vinyl um, and you can do it with, with markers. And that's what I'm going to be playing with today. So let me go ahead and open that up into my canvas workspace. Okay, so that is all on there. And I think I want the size of my my image, the width to be, I'm thinking about 10 inches should be good. I've downloaded this off of the Jennifer Maker website. This one is basically a ruler for you to be able to put things onto t-shirts. I haven't done any of these, so I went ahead and got her ruler so I'd get it positioned right. And I just printed it out on some heavyweight cardstock so that I'll be able to get everything positioned. And this doesn't have to be that durable because I don't know how many more I'm gonna do. If I decide I wanna do more, uh, more t-shirts like this, I can just do this out of some plastic and have a, a permanent ruler. But Jennifer Maker does set this on her website for free. So this, shows that this is about 10 inches and when I hold it up to a t-shirt it looks like it is about the right width so I'm going to go with about 10 inches or less for my little llama okay so each of these bits I believe you can move them around so I think I want to have my llama ears and everything to be this is showing it's like right at about seven and a half inches so that's still pretty good size. I think that'll work, but I think I want the face to be a little bit higher up. So I'm just going to move that up some. And I just did a select and I'm going to use my cursor to move it up so I don't get it kind of out of alignment. Let's see how that looks. And I think that'll be fine. So this is what I'm going to send over to my scan and cut. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is I just need to hit this download button. It's going to download it over to my machine. It says some elements are going to be automatically removed because they are very small. That is fine with me. And then I'm going to download it to my scanning cut. And it is all ready to go over there. So next we need to get my scanning cut ready to do what I'm wanting it to do. And instead of cutting, what I'm gonna do is I am going to actually use a marker to have it trace around my image there. And initially I was going to just trace it in black, but you know what? I think I like the idea of the ears being a lighter color. So I'm gonna use a pink marker. 
Now this is something that does not come with your machine. This is an adapter to allow you to use different markers in your scanning cut. Now there is a, a special kit that has a special marker for it, but you can use your own as long as they fit inside here. So I wouldn't really say you'll probably want to play with this a little bit, but you do need to lift up the gray and turn it around so that it is wide open. Now you can see in there, it's pretty much a circle, right? So now I can slide this in and I'll be able to go whichever height I need it. The reason for this bit is so that you can tighten it back down. So I'll go ahead and put this in there, slide it on down and have it just touch at the bottom. And then I can pull this down and twist it the other way, twist it to the left until that is snug. Okay, so now what's going to happen is this is going to draw around in the place where my blade normally would be. And the tip is going to touch my paper so I can draw out that image. Let's go over to the scan and cut and get this um, put in the machine. So... This marker is going to go in this slot here. So to install it there, you just lift up on this gray bit here, pull out your blade, and then we can slide this one back in, same position. It has this, um, this shape here that is the same as the shape on the back of there. So it's gonna fit in there perfect. There we go. And then place it down there. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and look at the screen over here. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and retrieve the data. And this is coming from the cloud. So it's going to pull in that image for us. I've already placed some um, white cardstock onto my mat, so it's ready to go there. Okay, so now we have our image there, right? And to me, it looks like it is around seven, so what I need to do is I'm going to actually change the position of my cardstock so that it's going to make sure that I have plenty of room for it. And my mat isn't all that sticky anymore. It's where I've used it quite a bit. So I'm going to tape down the edges with some purple tape. just to be on the safe side. I, mean, I don't have to do this. This is basically because I, I don't want anything to move around and it's not like I was gonna be cutting it. Cutting it would definitely um, pull a bit more on the card. This though, I'm hoping is gonna hold it in place enough so I don't have to worry about it. Okay. So now that that is taped down, I'm going to press this button here. This one is looks like the scanned surface and that one is going to show us okay that is going to scan in my paper so that we can see what the background looks like with our image behind it. And that'll also help me to make sure it is positioned between the two bits of purple tape. Okay, so it does need to, the whole thing needs to be shifted over just a touch. So let's go into edit. And we're going to select all. And then we're going to move it. So I'm going to move it over some. And let's move it down a little bit from the edge just to be on the safe side. Okay, and then hit OK, and OK, because we have all of that right where we want it. Now I'll hit select, and I'm going to select draw. The last time I used this with you guys, I did cut, but this time we're going to do draw. And now it's going to draw all those little lines from our image. Um, I think I do want to do a little bit of a test, though, and I can cut that off later. Let's do a tiny little bit down. We'll do a little triangle and should test. And it drew on there perfect. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and let it draw out my image.
Okay, so let's take it out of the machine. I think that looks awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and take that tag off so it's out of my way. So I don't want to heat that plastic, right? Yeah, let's just see and make sure that this is going to fit the way I'm expecting. I am going to cut this out, but let's just, for the moment, just put at least it there. And then if I put my, I think I do want it up a little bit higher, but that would mean this is probably going to be a good placement for this. Let me zoom out a little bit. So as long as I get it placed in the center, that should work pretty well. And I can trim up a little bit around here to make it fit perfectly. So that is what we're going to go with. Next, I'm going to cut this out so it's just that ruler and I can start coloring my llama. So now I'm going to start just coloring things in. I've got some branches that are in green, some leaves and some flowers, and then of course our cute little llama. So I'm going to go ahead and color those in. And I figure if I go around the outline, like if I trace over where the pink already drew, that's probably going to give me kind of a brown outline. And that'll look like kind of cool too. So next I'm going to trim it up a little bit to make it a little bit easier for me to place down on my shirt correctly. So I'm just going to trim around the outside of it. It's also going to make it so I can have a place to attach my heat tape that's fairly close to the image. And I don't want this piece on there because that was of course just a test, um, test draw using my scan and cut. So I'd say this is probably all that I need. Okay, next I'm going to put it onto the t-shirt and get everything taped into place. So what I did in between all of this is I went ahead and pressed the shirt um, in half so I could have a, a line right down the middle that I can line up with this guide from Jennifer Maker. So I'll go ahead and lay that down there and then I can place my cute little llama image side down, of course just below there and I'm going to put my fingers right beside the eyelashes which I could still kind of see through there just to make sure that they are still lined up and there we go so this should be perfect placement now if it's a little bit off it's okay because you know what this is handmade and it is my first attempt at doing a t-shirt 
So I'm going to go ahead and tape that down onto the t-shirt. And I do have the ears a little bit high, but that's going to be fine. Just a touch high isn't going to be that big of a deal. I think this will still be in about the right place for a shirt. You don't want it to be way too high or way too low because the way that it actually fits on you, if you put it in the center of the shirt, that's going to be down on your stomach when you're wearing it because shirts are so long. But you want this to be pretty much in the center of your chest. So that's what I'm doing here. So go ahead and get that all taped down. Now I'm going to play it safe. I'm not sure if this is going to transfer all the way through onto the other side. So I'm taking a piece of cardstock and I'm going to put that inside my shirt before I do any of the pressing. Okay, next I need my protective paper that's going to protect everything. It's going to protect uh, my machine from getting any kind of ink transferred onto it by mistake. So the way that this is going to work, I'm going to have one piece that goes over the top and then I'm going to have another piece that's going to be underneath my shirt over on my heat press. So let's go ahead and take it over there and get everything ready to go. Okay, so for the t-shirt, you do want to check the website of your blanks every time to make sure you've got the correct temperature and duration. So this is being set at 370 for 35 seconds. So I've already got it set at that. So first off, we need our bottom layer of protective paper. And then we've got our t-shirt. I'll place right on top, making sure that the image we're doing is on the top and is completely on that platform there. And I'm double checking to make sure that my protective paper is off the edges on both ends, just to be on the safe side. Okay, so we've got all of that there. And then I'll take my second piece of protective paper and put it over the top. Okay, so now all we need to do, and just double checking where it's placed, this is the edge of the platform. This is the top. And my image is exactly <laughs> the, the height of that. So I'm going to go ahead and press this down because the heat is already ready to go. There we go. And we're just going to wait for 35 seconds. And once that's done, I can go ahead and take this off. Okay, so now it's done. Let's go ahead and lift that up. Okay, we're going to do a quick peek test. Make sure everything is what we expect it. I have no idea. I haven't done a shirt before, so. Oh, that looks good. I like it. Okay, since the peak test looked good, let's go ahead and reveal the rest of the image. Oh my goodness, that is so cute. The only part I'm not 100% sure that I like, I would say, is the nose, but I still think that turned out super cute. Oh my goodness. I'm thinking I probably need to use a bit more brown or a bit less brown for his, his snout, but that looks awesome. And just to double check, let's take the cardstock out and see if there was any transfer to it. And... There was nothing that transferred on, so it means I didn't actually need this, but it's better safe than sorry, right? Okay, so now I've got myself a cute little llama t-shirt. Fantastic. Well, you guys <laughs> have a wonderful day. And I keep on telling you that if I can do this, you can too. So just believe me when I say that Artispree Iron on Inks makes crafting with sublimation so, so easy. Look how adorable that turned out. You guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to check out this playlist to see some other projects where I've been using some Artispree Ink. And I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.